<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My presentation this evening, entitled Voice and Vision, is a delicate blend of nature poetry and some of the images that have inspired my poems over the years. When I wrote my first poem in 1994, I had already been a nature photographer for 25 years. However, I found that no matter how beautiful my photographs of the interior were, they couldn't fully describe what I was experiencing. For instance, there was no road to the waterfalls, but more importantly, the photographs could not describe the emotions I experienced when encountering the extreme beauty of nature at close range. That can only be captured with the help of words. So I suppose you can say that I turned to poetry to complete my description of nature that I have started in my photographs. My first poem I wrote was entitled The Esquivo River. In primary school, we learned that we were born in the land of the mighty Roraima. Later, we learned all about the mighty Kaijur. But in today's language, the word mighty has lost some of its strength. For instance, all, all the Calypsonians are mighty this and mighty that. And even the Rastaman, when he tastes the cocoa, he said, this food tastes mighty. <laughs> we even got a mighty McDonald's now. <laughs> I seen the papers and I was congratulating you and Mary. <laughs> <coughs> Having said that, I would still like to, to submit the Escobar River for, as a candidate for mightyhood. How can photographs alone describe a river that flows more than 500 miles from the Akarai Mountains on our southern border to the Atlantic Ocean, creating hundreds of islands along the way, three of which, Leguan, Wakenham, and Hog Island, are larger than some of the island nations of the Caribbean. I now like to do for you now my first poem, The Esquivo River. Many fingers of many hands, cradled in the heart of our hinterland. From bubbling beginnings in high Akarai, you come to us, messenger of Mother Nature, to nourish flora and fauna, forest and farm, a Marinian coastlander all with an even hand. Tumbling from the highest peaks to quench savannah below, how wise your waters must be, as things men only dream of pass daily before your eyes. At the end of your life's journey, great river and ocean entwine in a lover's embrace to spawn a necklace of islands strung across your noble neck, finally surrendering priceless gifts to a most grateful nation. Thank you. The main purpose for my exhibitions and publications of the photographs of the interior landscapes was to introduce Guyanese to the natural beauty of their homeland. But it was like trying to introduce two people that don't want to meet each other. <laughs> as Guyanese, we received our natural heritage as a gift of birth, and yet hardly anyone wants to open the gift and see what's inside. These are a few random examples of our natural heritage. Guyana is a land of contradictions. For instance, we are below sea level on the coastlands, yet almost half the country is mountainous. Yet there are people who live all their life in Guyana and have never seen a Guyanese mountain. This is Eagle Mountain near Malia. It's part of the Batara Escarpment. These, of course, are caterpillars, or hairdressers, as I call them. Like, like, one well, reason I call them hairdressers is because, like some young ladies present, they sometimes use hair extensions. <laughs> the Victoria Rizzo, or Victoria Amazonica, as it's known, is the largest water lily in the world. It is our national flower and it is found in the rivers of the Rubunoni as well as the upper reaches of the, the Barbies River. The reason why this flower is in full bloom is because the photograph was taken at 10 o'clock at night.
everyone is familiar with the old saying that sampling lava and creek water will bring you back to our shores. But I have a new one to add to that. If you bathe in the clear turquoise pools of the North Pacaraima Mountains, you will never leave Vienna in the first place. This is my daughter Nicolette and I enjoying the blue pools near in the mountains near where we used to live. The Huatzin or Kainji pheasant is our national bird. I'm quite proud of this photograph because it's not easy to capture them in flight. A few years ago, I had the pleasure of reading my next poem in Toronto in the heart of winter to 250 shivering Guyanese. However, its message came too late for them as they had already chosen to live in North America. I told them that in order to make such an important decision, they must first discover the beautiful land we were given. Only then they will be qualified to choose Guyana or not. The poem is called The Gift, and it is a poem for those of us who chose to stay at home. The Gift. Some say stroke of luck or simple destiny. I say act of God, for only he could give this blessed land to me. With generous hand he shared his wonderland, be it mountain high or creatures small. By rivers spread or fearless tread, we must go forth to greet them all. But if we are to love, we first must learn. The orchid's scent and each forest pathway is turn. The savannah bloom and every part's call. The jaguars growl and the roar of the waterfall. The most fitting way to give thanks to him is to love our land and scale its mountain rim. For our sweeter dreams of, mon uh, are of mountain streams when we are old and eyes roll in. And when our life comes to an end, how happy we should be, knowing our children will have to spend such a wondrous legacy. Thank you.